The Frozen North, Episode 45, Digital Dilemma. Hello and welcome to episode number 45 of the Frozen North Video Game Podcast. My name is JJ, and I'm here with my two friends to talk about story-focused video games, adventures, RPGs, we got you covered. What's up, Mark? Uh, what's up is... Howdy, y'all! <laughs> That's well, what's up. One more without laughing. You, you always laugh. Howdy, y'all! <laughs> it doesn't seem right when he doesn't laugh I after it. I wish I had a camera for the face he made to try not to laugh. It doesn't seem. It doesn't like feel right when you don't. Made a normal face. That was not normal. I feel like at all. I feel like howdy y'all, ha ha ha, is more <laughs> better than agreed. I'm Brian, by the way. Brian, how are you? Hi, I'm Brian. Are you, are you Brian? Um, sometimes Brian. Sometimes I'm Grim Slap Schleides. Oh, every now and then. Occasionally. When he gets that way, watch, yeah. watch out. You don't want to get those grum schlop schlickities on you. Yeah, that is correct. 100% true. 100% true. Because why? Science. Science can argue with it. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Although scientists are trying to argue with science all the time. That's the whole point of science. But, hey. All right. We uh, actually didn't get any emails this week. But if you would like to email us, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is frozennorthpodcast at gmail.com. We have a website at fngaming.net. Come out there and uh, check out our forum. Tell us what your top fives are. Uh, we would love to hear it because we like talking about it and ridiculing people for putting Mass Effect on every single list. Right, Brian? Yeah, I hate those people. What is wrong with them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a Facebook page at facebook.com slash the frozen north. We have a Twitter at FN Podcast. Our blog is frozennorthpodcast.blogspot.com. Subscribe to and rate us on iTunes. We would like to hear your feedback. Good, bad, anything. Brian hate mail. Please send it on over. We need that Brian hate mail. When he has going to give it up, it's episode 45. I'm never giving it up. Everybody does not hate I'm me. I'm never giving they it up. pretty much meh my existence. It hurts that, that nobody's sent us in any 45 episodes and you know, nothing. It, it's really disappointing. It is. It absolutely is. You would expect something at some point. All right. Uh, one <laughs> quick reminder. We do have a contest going on right now. It is one week left, I do believe. Yep. Next week, we will be announcing the winner that we will draw at random from the people who have entered. Uh, each week, Mark has been putting a post on our Twitter account F- at FN Podcast, as previously mentioned. All you have to do is literally answer the question that he puts puts up there. That's we, right. We've had questions like uh, your first console that you ever owned, your favorite game, etc. You can you can retweet it, you can favorite it, but that doesn't mean you're entered. You Correct. have to reply to. You it. have to answer it. Absolutely. So and it's, I mean it's super easy. It's answer. super easy, and you could win a forty dollar game. Correct. Am I eligible? No. Negative. Dang so you're going to get the game anyways. So, I mean, there's a lot of contests out there in the world, right, guys? Right. Lots of contests. But how many contests have uh, come from Twitter accounts with only like 120 so followers? Where are you going with this? I'm saying that your odds of winning oh, are yeah, yeah. extraordinary. Very Absolutely. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, it, I mean, it's all just to build traffic over there. But yeah. if you do happen to win, we draw your name out of the people who have entered. And you do win. You get a game that is worth $40 or less that we will gift to you in some way. Uh, it has to be accessible. It has to be easy to get. We will also get the game for ourselves. We will all play it and review it on the show. And if one of us fails to complete that game in the allotted time that we set, that person has to put on their address. We should uh, get their picture taken, and it will be on the website. Mark. Yeah. Yep. We should discuss that for a second. Okay. So if they pick a game that we just played... And then Do we have to play it again? No. No. Oh! Are you sure? What do you mean? What, do you what, mean? Are, you, what are you going for here? I don't understand. <laughs> well, if I some, could, I if could somebody def- picks Xeno Gears, he could. Yeah, yeah, does Brian but, have to play it again? But how how would you know if I played it or if I just said, yeah, I played it. Here's here, Yeah, I can but you story. can make that argument with anything. Even if you don't play true. a game, you just go read a wiki. I, it's true. But we're but going now, on honor system here. Yeah. But Brian and I have both played and beaten that game. Yeah. You would be screwed if somebody picked Xeno Gears. Yes. Immensely, somebody and I would has laugh said that wholeheartedly. Pick, it. pick Xeno Gears, please. Don't pick Xeno Gears. <laughs> I think you, you would pick. end up liking it. Would, though, yeah, that's he what's would. Funny, he would like it. It's just it's, 
<laughs> can't believe you guys picked a game that I, I really like, but I can't beat. Uh, <sighs> it took Brian four months or something like that. Yep. With several breaks. Yeah, I took a lot of breaks. How, what, what was it, like uh, 68, 70 hours? 72 hours when 72. I finished it. Yep. Oh, Woo! man. Good stuff. So, yeah, head on over to at FN Podcast. Respond to the questions, and you'll be entered. Simple as that. Heck yeah. All right. We got a Beyond the Game segment right now. We're going to be talking about downloads, DLC, and the future of gaming. Are we headed to an all-digital format? Yes. An all-digital utopia. I want to I want to start by saying that, yes, I do believe we are. And I think they jumped the gun. But I think they know it for sure. Microsoft. They yeah. tried to do it at the beginning of, of uh, the Xbox One's life cycle. They pushed it too quick, and I'll, and I'll explain why when we like get I said, into they, this. They jumped the gun. Uh, we're just not ready for it yet. Definitely. We don't have the hardware for it yet. Well, I, I mean, there's still tons of people who are just like, I want my physical copy. I like doing that. I think it's got to be a, a longer transition. Well, a lot. Of my, my whole hesitation was... So cloud servers and cl- it's all going to be on the cloud soon. Don't don't fool yourselves. The way Steam's model is, is this is how it's going. Definitely, uh, you buy the game and your license is tagged to an account on that cloud server, so you don't have to store it. It'll always be there for you to pull off the cloud. That's You'll never where, scratch up your disc, right? That's where it is going. The way Microsoft wanted to do it, though, left a lot of holes because a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah, it's not. That's Definitely. not there yet. That's, what, that's actually that's what I wanted to talk about yeah. most of all in this discussion, me personally. Yeah. I believe there are two prerequisites to the all digital world being ideal, and that is we need much better internet infrastructure. Oh yeah. When when Google Fiber or competitive services become widespread and when hard drive space becomes much cheaper, then this world will be feasible. More of a reality. Yeah. I think my, you're you're right. Microsoft knows the future. I think they just they tried to start it a little bit too quick. It's coming. Mm-hmm. It's coming. Don't don't fool yourselves, yeah, we're guys. Just not ready for it. Don't fool yourselves. Uh, and we're never going to be ready for it. That's the thing. No, there's never going to be a consensus that digital is better. That's true. But, but digital will be here. I, before I disagree. I think that the as the current generation gets older and the younger generation experiences more commonly. Right, digital games, they're going to yeah. be more used to it, right. and it's going to it's going to kind of phase out eventually. I think it's going to be, like I said, a gradual thing. I guarantee you, you know, if, if it's still around, Final Fantasy twenty seven comes out and it's digital only. If I'm still around, I'm going to be disappointed, right? Because I'm going to be like, I want my box, right. I want my collector's edition. But that's our generation and everything. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, you're right. Is we're not ready for it at this point because there are so many people who are hanging on to. I mean, look at my Tales of Zillia two box, man. That's not digital. That is that is. <laughs> collector's edition dream right there no nope. because it's it's just got stuff oh yeah i mean the only thing that a, a digital edition can do is be like here's a cool mount or a special gun with a skin or something yep. you know it's nothing nothing tangible that you can actually hold and and, and right you know but i think like you said the culture is definitely changing the way the way young people value material things i don't it's, i don't think a lot of young people are super into like collectible stuff Putting posts on the walls, displaying their all their crap that they own. I think they're into like their phones, their right. tablets, their electronics, their things that let them connect to the internet. The tectonic plates are shifting. I'm guilty of this. Oh yeah, people are obsessed with electronics now. Oh, absolutely. And I think that it's for good dwarfing... reason. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they are awesome. But I think it's dwarfing old school collectible stuff. It is. It is absolutely. But again, there you know people of our generation who grew up with the old school, you know, uh, the, the physical copies and all that stuff. We're still that's still what we like to see because it's what we know. It's familiar to us. Mm-hmm. As you start to see people who are more comfortable with digital, not that we're uncomfortable with it, I think just more people prefer those physical copies um, from our age group. Uh, you talk to a, a younger kid who who's just starting out and all he does is PC game and he's got Steam. He's not going to care. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I think that's where we're headed. So we talked about the cloud. That's a big part of this future. Uh, the only, I guess, issue I would have with the cloud is that 
we all have to realize that cloud the cloud is not magic. The cloud are basically server farms who need to be maintained. Yes. Which causes which causes companies to have to pay. Okay, so what and it's probably never going to happen in our lifetime, but what if Steam just goes out of business and says we're done, right? Well, all those games you bought are gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're shutting down their cl- server farms. So that that investment is up. That's the only thing that scares me about all digital. With physical copies, even if uh, I'm sure you have tons of physical copies of companies that are now de- de- debunked and br- bankrupt and don't even exist anymore, mm-hmm. right? If you are in the cloud and that company goes bye bye, that game's gone. If they can't support their cl- server farm on the cloud now, they can you can have another company buy it out or there's a lot of workarounds to that but the real the real reality is that stuff you buy could go well, that's that's only if you're streaming the game directly from them if you're playing like a, just a single player game that you downloaded to your computer no what i'm saying is you know how you know how if you delete so let's say you delete the game off of your hard drive right and mm-hmm. it's in that steam file oh you can't get it again you can't ever get it I, again yeah, I see what right you mean. that's yeah. what i'm talking about gotcha. it's gone it, yeah. it's not ever available for download anymore because there's no server that supports it yep that's the only hesitation I have with it. They're going to need to figure out a way to basically say, if I buy, if I spend my money on this, you, you know, it's mine forever. Which, which yeah. is what freaks me out about consoles doing that, right? Because, like, I mean, perfect example, my PS4. When I found out I couldn't, like, it, it wasn't going to have the PS1, PS2 games that I could download, like the PS3 had. I was disappointed because it's, I, I wanted to be able to play those games still without having to bust out my old system. Now that means that if we're going all digital. New console comes out, they're going to have to have the capabilities to play those older games in each new console. You're right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because I, I don't want a pile of consoles sitting around for me to, you know, I have to go back and play this one. I mean, some people do like that, but if we're going all digital, I think all digital should mean all accessible as well. I will say the good news about this future is with consoles in general, especially this generation, um, they are now built way more similar to PCs than they ever have been. Yeah. So what that means is as long as they stay along that line, it'll be easier for backwards compatibility because there won't be such huge like hardware uh, issues between the two consoles. Like the PlayStation uh, 4, I I haven't really dug into the Wii U specs, but I'm I think they're pretty similar. They use, you know, pretty standard processor uh GPU power, but the fact that they're built more like computers now means that every generation that gets better can just upgrade which means you can still have optimization for the older games that's always the biggest problem with backwards compatibility is hardware limitations that brings up another thing that i'm worried about nintendo is so bad about their online and digital everything Mm -hmm. i think that if they were to ever truly lose it i think that's where they would end up losing it if they don't change something soon i mean perfect example with the uh the the way that their systems are set up right now your games aren't tied to any specific account at all. They are tied to your system. If that system fries, your games are gone. You got to buy them all over again. Yep. If something happens to, like, I mean, I brought this up last week, my 3DS. I have one of the original ones. The reason I didn't upgrade to an XL is because I can't transfer my ambassador games that I got. And that's free. a huge oversight. You know, and it's like, why, why not just give me an account? Everybody else is doing this. Yeah. Why are you not doing this? Like, there's no good reason why not to do this. Yeah. There are pitfalls with the other side of that, though. When everything that you own is tied to an account, and they someone decides that you've done something that's against the terms of service or True. what have you, they can shut your account down and you lose everything. And they I, can, but that's again, if they're like ruining the terms of service mm-hmm. and you're you're breaking the rules that they set forth when they at the beginning always ask you, these are terms of service. You want to use our product. You want to do this. And we all read that's it. That's the whole point. <laughs> Well, no, I, but you I mean that's the point of them doing that. Oh, I agree because you're but, supposed to follow. But there the have rules. been but some high-profile stories of people doing yeah. like nothing wrong, as far as they can tell, and having this happen. It happened but, with uh, with someone who had bought hundreds of Amazon uh, eBooks. There's there's always going to be loopholes like that, though, and you just have to hope and trust that the system is going to. There's contingencies in place to work that out yeah. to find out whether it was a legit yeah. mistake or if something really was done wrong. Because if somebody really is doing something wrong. They should lose their stuff. True. Like, what What are you doing, guy? Right. But if there was a mistake made or something like that, hopefully, like I said, there's a contingency in place to reflect on that and be like, oh, th- this was our bad. You actually are fine. Yeah. Here's your stuff. You know? You're right. And it, that kind of that kind of butts up against digital rights management, too. That's been a big uh, hot. DRM's been a big hot button. Exactly. I mean, 
digital in its nature is DRM. Uh, and I think the whole, the, I think the biggest thing that, that I'm up in arms about with DRM is if I'm paying a premium price, then I own the, then I'm going to own. I don't want to rent. That's what companies have been saying that for years. They know you're renting our game. Uh, basically meaning like we can take it away at any, that's DRM basically is yep. saying uh, it's, you're paying for the license. No, if, I, if I'm paying for the license for it, it's mine. That's the whole point. And they're saying, no, 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 you're paying to use it. We can take it away at any time. And I don't agree with that at all. Um, I agree with that in case of like online games. Well, sure. Like MMOs but, and stuff. But if I buy a single player game. I think it's more to protect like. Pirating. Not even pirating, but like changing the game. Like if you're if you're good at doing that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. physically altering the game to the way you want it to be. Yeah. And then reselling that. To other people, copying and reselling and that kind of I think it's more to protect. It is, but it know. still it still hurts the consumers in the end. No, I agree. I agree. So, like I said, there's, so far, there's loopholes and, and workarounds to everything. So so far, our digital versus versus physical debate has centered around a copy of a video game. But I want to take it a step further. Go. Are is gaming in general going to make the leap from physical to digital? And by that, I mean. Our consoles going to become a service. Explain. What do you mean service? What I mean by, first of all, this goes back to uh, we would have to have much better internet for this to be a possibility. But what this means is essentially there's going to be a server farm somewhere out there in the world. We're going to have a little tiny box on the back of our TV and we just dial in to our console and play our games on it. So streaming, basically. Basically all streaming. Because that's where everyone's going. That's where, I mean, Adobe Creative Cloud, all of their products now are a service. So you're you're basically saying like so I've got my TV and I went out to the store and I bought a generic controller for said TV. Yeah. Now I can go on there and instead of going out to a store and buying a like you know having my choice of an Xbox or a PlayStation 4, I can choose between Steam, PlayStation Online or Xbox Online and like get that platform that houses all the games on my TV exactly. and then play through that way. That's a good That's interesting. It's probably where it's going, but that's very far down in the future because the infrastructure Agreed. of internet Definitely. speed we would need is ridiculous for that. Right Especially. now, there are services that kind of do this. Uh, there's one on NVIDIA's uh, consoles. They're not consoles. They're controller, console, portable thing, mm-hmm. and their tablet. That kind of work. There's some compression in the video, and it can fluctuate how well it runs based right. on what time of day you're playing. Well, stuff with like bandwidth that. usage. Exactly. And that's the whole issue so is... There, we are seeing the infancy of this idea right now. I think, you know, maybe 20 years from now, we might not Who be knows? buying new consoles at that point. It's, it's, very, it's very plausible. I and mean, there's, some, you know, there's some upsides and downsides to that. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, there's not going to be a big cost at one point. It's not going to be like, oh, in 2021, I'm going to spend $400 on this playstation console mm-hmm. it's gonna be maybe i spend ten dollars a month on it that's probably true as well because obviously like they they make money off their console sales and right. if you're spending i mean there really wouldn't be a need to upgrade that that often yeah you know maybe if you need a new interface or something like that but i, I imagine even in that case that that's could just be paid you could for just, by you could just do a patch and boom right, exactly. rather than having to roll out a whole new yep thing like the playstation online 2 or something yeah you know Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about DLC. It's part of the whole digital. I mean, that's already. I think DLC is should already be a part of the game. Well, but di- there's the argument. I think I think you're gonna make or some argument. No, I'm gonna make a completely different argument. Go. Have you seen that EA subscription service? No. Yes. Because we could see stuff like that happening too, where you pay EA. I don't know what they're charging, like five or ten dollars a month for access to basically everything they have. So forget about DLC. I'm, and you know what? If you if you're paying for the game as a service instead of as a product, what's the point of DLC? As an additional cost, of course they're going to have DLC, but not to get more money out of you in the sense of buying a, a fixed product, but in a way to encourage you to continue paying that subscription fee. Yeah, you think so that's almost, something we could see more of in the future, like a Square Enix channel or something? Yes, you think so? I think so. That'd be interesting. My my take on DLC though is you're right. Day one DLC is that's what I'm referring to. What you're referring to, but I fi- I feel like DLC is fine as long as it's the same quality as the game because that gives the company to, hey let's add a little bit more to the story later when we don't have time now 
to do it. We got to release the game. But, but I let's. Think, I think there's a big difference between DLC and an expansion. I think you can pay for an expansion because it means it's expanding the game quite a bit. There's a lot more to but that's, it. That's that's a semantic argument. I think a DLC DLC should be free. But that's semantic because the 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 DLC to The Last of Us is considered more of an expansion, but it's called DLC because it's content you download. I mean, that's just all wording at that point. Yeah, but it's better if it was free because science argue that. I can't, argue it, I can't argue science no, I, facts. That's what I but but what I'm saying is like that DLC like that, downloadable content that actually adds the story to the game, that's something I, I, I like because it's like, hey, I really want to, like the DLC in Mass Effect was great except for the day, day one DLC which is just a money grab because th- to have day one DLC you have had to have already produced it. Yeah. So you it should just be included. But I digress. The later ones where they have they they have released the game and they're like, well, we want to add more to the content, so let's let's produce some DLC. It's fine. I'm still you still have to pay for that because they they're still providing a service and it's adding to your experience. Like, oh man, I'm gonna go back and find out about the Reapers now and in the Leviathan DLC. I can't wait. You don't think that stuff's already in development though? When the game is, uh, it, it could be, but out? I would rather. But it could be, but that would just delay the. Because then there'd be a perpetual development. And you'd never get the game released. Well, let's add this. Well, let's add this. Let's you know, release the game in right. a finished form, which it was, uh, and then add that content on later. I'll buy it. That's fine as long as it's quality. Okay. I see what you mean. You know, because yeah. then it gives them chance to. If move they're on. if they're uh, if they've going to go into game design a little bit, I don't know much about it compared to some people I know. But if you have a design document that explains. <laughs> Sorry, he's listening. He's going to get offended if I don't say that. Um, <laughs> if I have a design document that explains what the game is, what the total package is, what the plot is, and then I decide I, there's a new feature, that's fine to turn that into DLC. Yes. But if I take something out of that document right. and I cut that out and make that DLC... That's what day one DLC that's crap. is. And that's crap. Yeah, you can't segment your game. But put out a finished product, fine, and then like The Last of Us go, oh yeah, we want to show you a little backstory into Ellie. We're going we're gonna to produce that. I'll buy it. Okay. Yes, I, I, hundred percent, I agree with yeah. that. That's that's yeah. right. Yeah, it's the day one stuff where. I'm well, just day like, one stuff means you've already produced it. Why like, are you my paying for you're it? You're essentially splitting up your game just to make more money. Correct. And it's like mm-hmm. you're just trying. Ew, yes. You dogs. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's not that's not cool. Nobody likes that. Day one DL to the CL. No thanks. I'm looking forward to this future. Yeah, I think I it's know a JJ future. isn't. In some I think ways, it's a bright I like my future. collection. No, in some ways, I am absolutely. I, well, I like having everything super accessible. W- okay, which for sure. But I also like, you I know, know sitting back on the couch, looking at the back of a game box, let and me, reading. You know, let me paint you a beautiful picture. Oh boy, the year's three thousand four hundred probably is where it's going to be at. You're still alive, ma- miraculously through the power of science. Well, uh-huh. his his experience of life is now. Uh, life as a service right on the internet so <laughs> you're sitting in your living room and you have a holographic display of all your digital games oh and what you can grab those holographic displays and sit down on your couch Ooh, screw uh what did you, what year did you say three thousand uh, three thousand four what is happening okay. right now ten years from now i go into my oculus rift and i look at all my games that in I a have. digital all my room physical digital games I have them all over my digital room, and I can have my friends come into my digital room and check out all my digital you can stuff. Hold that them I own. in your hand. Yeah, well, I can hold them in, in my digital hand. Uh, six sense mm-hmm. uh, yeah. controller hand. I like it. That's ten years away. Yeah, so ten years away. No, but what I'm excited about is when potentially consoles are a service, having sessions. And what do I mean by sessions? I mean I'm playing on my TV at home, and I have to go get something. So. I pause my session. I'm on my way. I'm at a. <laughs> I, I have to make a stop somewhere else. I'm waiting for the bus. I pull my phone out. Go back into the same session. Keep playing the game. Go to your. Fr- go to my friend's house. Go to Brian's house. He's playing on the main TV. I go to another TV. Brian go back and I have into the my same session. idea right here. I think. Hey, yep. what what console offers that? that oh, just was released. Oh man, what is it? Uh, what? Is so it? wait, there's a Vita. You can buy a Vita and mm-hmm. then. If you have internet mm-hmm. on this console yep. and you were like, I have to step out for a minute and go somewhere, and you're in the middle of a session. I thought that was in home streaming. Are only. you saying you can play PS4 games from your Vita? Yeah, you can do this thing where you pause your session and then connect to your what? PS4 remotely. I thought that was no, you in li- home streaming you only. You can do that. No, you literally can be on somebody else's internet. 
connect. To, I can do it on my pat- tablet from JJ's internet right now. I can. All right, all right, all right. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> but hold on. Let me take it a step further. Okay. Let me take it a step further. Every screen everywhere can have my session on it. Yeah, that technology exists. It you, can. It happens. How? He just told you. I, can you put your PS Vita into his big screen TV? Yeah. Without his PS4? I can connect my Vita to a TV. Does it have a... Does it? Yeah. It's got a, it's a special cord, but... Oh, special cord? Come yeah. on. <laughs> Screw that. Oh, my gosh. I'm done with it. <laughs> he was looking for anything. Yeah. He's like, No, you on. can actually do that now, Mark. I actually was uh, recycling my idea for what I want Windows to be. But you, but you, so you it make it sounds like you should have gone PS4. <laughs> no, this is what <laughs> I want. That's what you want. This is what everything should be. No, you're right. I should have. You're right. Xbox I should, should have, have done it too. Okay, so I've got my Photoshop project open on my tablet, and I leave my tablet at home. So I just log into my Windows session over here, and I can continue working on my Photoshop project. Well, if it's a Photoshop project, Can't you, you probably remote- could do that with Dropbox, Isn't- couldn't you? But I don't. I want my session to be present, exactly how it was when I left. I don't want to have to reopen the file. I ah. want my session to always exist. Gotcha. I shouldn't ever have to stop running my computer. And it can be anywhere on any screen. Face it, we just burned you. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, but all that aside, the fact that that technology is now out and ready on the PS4 means that that is definitely where oh, yeah. it's going. It's where it is going. So you're you're right and on. Steam's doing that in home right yes. now. Yep. I just thought that was funny that you said that, and Brian and I looked at each other at the same time. And we're like, "Yep, we know what we're gonna say." Now I will <laughs> say that it, I have problems with it because I have AT and T, and there's something I have to tweak for me to do it playing at like at, at his house. Sure. But the fact that I can do that is awesome. Like I can literally play The Last of Us right now if I had my Vita. From my PS, I could turn it on at home. But ideally, in the future, there would never be any reason for the game to start chugging because if you're using all the resources of your "quote unquote" console, they'll just add more resources from the and cloud. that and that's what's exciting. That sure. There's never, there's no more hardware limitations. So I think, I, I mean, in in conclusion, yeah, I think just we get can a PS4. Agree. I, oh, <laughs> well, you have to get a Vita too. Honestly, it only works with the Vita right now. They they don't so have far it. they're doing so it with far. their uh, with their tablets yes. Sony tablets and Sony, Sony tablets phones. too yep um, but I think we can we we're all agree- in agreement that we are definitely headed to a more if not all digital format yes. eventually oh yeah so it's on its way it's I mean it's going to be exciting or not exciting depending on who you are mm-hmm. um, I think it's it's a cool concept and I think if done right it it can be great I will I will always have my collection though for sure well, yeah but uh, <laughs> you know. It's excited to see. I'm going to go into Mark's Oculus Rift room and look at his collection. Yeah. Come into my... O- see, I don't have enough shelf space for a bunch of collected stuff. But in my Oculus room, it's like as big as I could want it. Exactly. I have 4,000 square feet in my Oculus house. And he's Plenty got like of two games. <laughs> <laughs> here's my 4,000 square foot room. And here's my two games on the shelf. But oh, he's be, not arguing. There'll be Sweet Code and one and Sweet Code two. two. Yeah, there you go. Not three. And Sweet Code and three. Okay. Three games. All right. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Good stuff, guy. Yeah. Good stuff. Good discussion. Well, he burned me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, he was talking about it, and I'm like, I, but I've done that on my. Oh my god, I've done that. It's like it exists. Because I, when I first got hey, it, it's hey, because it drives the, home, forget, the point home even more. Yeah. Forget about that. Forget about forget about how there's <laughs> egg on my face. <laughs> And let's just take a minute to say, we're in the future, guys. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We're in the future. Yeah, we are. I'm trying to turn this around. No, no but I want to turn it. It's we're not, in the future. No, no. How is that not amazing? Yeah, no. we're all we're within the year. We're going to have real virtual oh, reality that's actually viable. Up. He's but what's funny up. is he, he didn't remind me of that feature till I was like, he was saying what he was saying. I was like, but wait, I've done that. Oh my god, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, you're in the future. I am in the future. Shake my hand. Well, we're in the future. Welcome to we the have future. PS4s. You don't have a Vita yet. You're right, but I just said you're PS4s, not in the future yet. I didn't say Vita, <laughs> but you can't do that, so you're not in the future. I have no interest in doing that, though. Well, then he's the only one. That, Brian's the only one in the future, guys. Brian, can I borrow your Vita sometime? Yeah, I'll be in the future then, but only for that brief period of time. <laughs> he's not playing it right now, so he's, he's is he not in the future right now? Uh, I guess he's <laughs> not in the future. right okay. now. Okay, <laughs> so you just lied. So which is it, Mark? This is the best episode ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh boy, that was a good discussion, though. I, I like everybody's everybody's take. All right. Moving on, we got our bi-weekly question. I think, uh, and I realized this as I was editing, uh, I guess it would be two weeks ago, 
I totally forgot to announce the bi-weekly question for this week on that episode, but I did post it on the forum and we got, we got a response on there. But uh, basically we asked this week, uh, how do you feel about console exclusives that at some point become exclusive to another console or go, go multi-platform? Uh, case in point, what happened with uh, the new Tomb Raider game? It <laughs> At first, I mean, we found that it was going to be a time release, but at first everybody thought it was going to be an Xbox One exclusive. Oh, yeah. And people were burned because they were like, what the heck? You know, people on both sides of the fence had your back and we were fans of the series and you're just going to go to one side now out of nowhere just because of money. It's like, thanks. It's a big slap in the face to your fans. Yep. Again, they've they've since said that it's a timed release, so eventually it will be coming to PS4 as well, but people are still a little bit kind of irked by it that they would even do that just for yep. money when it's like, you know, right. we, we helped you get to this point. And my, it started out as a PlayStation exclusive in the first place. My opinion, and it's simple. There should never be exclusives. Games should always be multi-platform on all platforms. But that's because I'm a gamer and I want everybody to experience. Like, I, I hate that a lot of the population hasn't played The Last of Us. I agree and I disagree with you. I disagree. Okay. I, I think all games should be always multi-plat. Okay, so I'm going to start my point with... Wait, did Mark say he m- both disagrees and agrees? Yeah, he's so neutral. He, he, he marked. Shocker. <laughs> he, marked, he marked that one. He marked it real good. I'm going to start this discussion with why do exclusives exist? Competition. Well, why do they really exist? To sell more consoles. Because a company like Sony or mm-hmm. Microsoft or Nintendo cuts a check to another company. They use that money to make a game. That game comes exclusively to their console. People want to play the game. So or it's maybe an they in-house. Have to buy. Or the company like Sony buys or it's a studio. In-house. Yeah. But the real reason they're doing that is to sell consoles. Right. And to Correct. make money. So, with that said, I think that especially third-party exclusives, while they sound bad on the surface, and maybe they are bad in certain ways, especially the Tomb Raider one, that's bad. But a lot of times, people like Sony and Microsoft are cutting checks to companies and giving them money that they wouldn't otherwise have to take a risk. Let me rebut you right right quick. They are taking money. The reason they have to pay is because that company... Like Square Enix, we'll use Tomb Raider as an example. They have to pay to make up for the loss of money that they would potentially be losing by making it go exclusive. So Square Enix is like, hey, Microsoft, we'd really love to just release it on your console. There's an opportunity cost to everything. Correct. But we're going to be losing this much money, so we're going to need to ha- you know, be paid, obviously, to make up for that revenue loss. And here's what I'm saying. You disagree why, with me? Why would they but- do that? What? Why would they do that? To sell, if it just to evens sell, out, to sell if it just evens out, to sell consoles. It's because they're no, no, no. From the publisher's perspective, why would they agree to it? If it only evens because it's out, guaranteed there's no reason revenue. to do it because it's exactly. guaranteed because revenue. there's a risk factor involved. Correct. And with new IPs, there's always more risk. No, you're right. So I think that that money allows certain companies to create new IPs and have a guaranteed certain amount of money but, come from someone and allows them to take a risk that they wouldn't otherwise take. But you say you disagree with me, and let me explain why I, I say all games should always be all multi-platform. I'm not looking at it from a business perspective. I'm looking at it from literally a gamer's perspective. I don't want to. I don't. I how pissed off did I get when Microsoft said you have to buy this with this system? They didn't give you a choice. I hate it when games don't give you a choice either. Like maybe I really want to play Halo. I don't want to buy it, buy an entire console just to play that game. I'm a gamer. I want to play games. Business side, if I was one of the business owners, I'd be like, yeah, I love exclusives. They're great. They make my company a lot of money. As a gamer, all they do is lose me money because I have to now buy an extra console. Well, let me rebut you. Okay. I like the Dead Rising series. What if they decided this is too risky, I don't know if this IP is going to work, and we don't have any guaranteed income, Mm -hmm. we're not going to do it. But what do you mean? I mean that there's games that have been made because they've had that guaranteed revenue that's allowed them to take more of a risk than they would have taken otherwise. Let's just do another Mega Man because we know that'll make money. Well, I don't see what this has to do with what Brian was saying. Yeah, I'm saying that there are games that you've played and enjoyed that wouldn't exist if it weren't for that check that was cut. But I wouldn't have known about that, so it doesn't hurt me. But I'd still... So, Either way. So you're saying yeah. that you'd rather there not be a masterpiece... As long as you don't know about it, there's no loss. Either way, either way, from a business and a gamer's perspective, it would be worse to have all games on all systems. Why? Hands down. Competition. Simple as that. Why? Because if it was, everybody's going to go with the, the, the better option, no matter what. That, but that, don't you see that you just, that's what I'm saying. But actually, then, there, but then that, that actually takes out the other option, and then that one 
company has a monopoly and can charge whatever the heck it, they want. It just means the companies that are putting out the hardware have to be way so, more competitive with their specs I don't know about that. and all that. No, Here, here's my yeah. argument, taking what you just said, because I agree with you 100%. Uh, if Halo was on all the consoles, would Sony have had a reason to pay money for someone to make a comp- competitive product to bring people to their console? Would they have spent a ton of money to make Killzone? I'm going to rebut you by just saying Call of Duty. Or, sorry, Resistance. Call of Duty is a wildly successful franchise that's on that's, multi-platforms. I wouldn't say that's a competitive product to Halo. How not? A, sci- uh, a great sci-fi shooter like yeah, yeah, Resistance. But, but nobody is saying which system they're going for for Call of Duty. It, it, they, it's, I'm trying to think of how to, how to word this. I mean, it's, it's literally simple, just economics. It, you're you're going to have a monopoly if you've got one side that's going to be doing it better than the other, and then that other side is, is just going to go away because there's no reason it, to do that. No, it's not, but you're, you're, missing like the whole, you're missing like the whole thing. There won't be a monopoly because, uh, let's say Sony gets a bit, let's say Sony wins, right? Let's say, let's, let's go in your world. Sony wins this monopoly war, right? They're like, hey, our, PS, our PS6 is coming out. It's going to be $7,000 because this is the only gaming platform that, that's going to work, right? And then Microsoft comes back and goes, hey, ours is going to be 200 bucks, and it's going to have similar specs. And the games are universal. There's never going to be a monopoly that way. Because you're going to be like, oh, yeah, obviously I'm going to buy... It doesn't work like it that. It does. Though. It absolutely How does, does it not, not work? When have, Okay, where's Sega with their new console? But what I'm trying to say, if, if games are all... There's never an exclusive game. So you're basically how saying is there that a, a company will look at it and be like, you know what, yeah. let's wait till they drop no, their prices no and price then we'll come drop in with no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying if there's no game that's exclusive to any console... There's not. That it's impossible for there to be a monopoly because as soon as Sony gets too pricey, people will buy the Xbox because they can play every game. The real world does not work that it way. It does. That's how business works. That, that's why McDonald's, Burger King, all that stuff. That's why they're still around because they just keep shoving each other's prices. They keep them right here because they're competing with each other. Yeah, they have the because they have the exact same products. But if, what if Burger King's? Hold on. If Burger what King if Burger went King... out of business all of a sudden and McDonald's started jacking up their prices, and Burger another... King wouldn't be like, let's go back uh, into another business Another business now. would pop up and go, hey, we can... Th- we... Th- what I'm saying is, is that competition isn't on. driven by products, it's driven by price. And there would never be a point where a company would be like... Because Sony, yeah, if you're a monopoly, Sony would start trying to drive the price up because they're the only one that has that. But then you've, if all the games are exclusive and you can make the hardware for cheaper, another company would swoop in and go, hey... Pay hundred dollars less. But the fact that Sony has that all those additional resources means they can do whatever it takes. All they have to do is be like, okay, price drop for us, boom, boom, exactly. and then and then and the, the other, consumer so wins. On. So what you're saying is a startup can come in and yeah. try and make a product that's cheaper than what Sony has, and then Sony will say, well, we have all these factories, we have all these yeah, patents. There's no we're way, just gonna, and, and we're we gonna still drive win you out as of business. Con- we still win as a consumer because we it's, still are paying. They can drive prices. everyone out of business. It doesn't matter as long as the prices are competitive. It's all that matters. I think it matters. It doesn't. It it absolutely matters. no. Yes. And I don't think that Killzone or Resistance would exist if Halo was a multi-platform game. And you might be right, but the fact that they don't, you can't be. That's supposition, because you can't be like, well, there's probably a masterpiece coming out at this point. If that we have no idea, what would exist or what wouldn't exist. Supposition is, it's, I can suppose all the time about everything. That's what I'm trying to say. You're supposing right now about how a new startup company would come in. There's not a new startup company. Like how that. would how would if would all be, games though. were? Explain to me. You if, just said it would. If be. all games were exclusive, how would somebody drive somebody else out of out of business? How weren't exclusive? You mean if yeah, if all games didn't have an exclusive, how would Microsoft or Sony drive each other out of business? How would that even be possible? Because all they'd have the next say the next console yeah. work console generation mm-hmm. comes out and games are all you yeah. Know, there's no on difference. The same thing. Say it had happened this time. Yeah. With the decisions Microsoft made, can you honestly say people, if they had the same options on PlayStation, w- more people wouldn't have gone to PlayStation over Microsoft? What do Microsoft you mean? Microsoft would have been hurting a hell of a lot more. How? Even more. Because if, the decisions if, they were making in the beginning. If Halo and Fable were on PS4, I would have bought the PS4. But what, I'm, tr- but what I'm trying to tell you is then Microsoft was like, what if they were like, okay, we're going to drop our prices, get rid of the Connect. And then people were like, okay, I'll buy well, the... They did that. Why you still they? have an option. You still have an option to go to Burger King or McDonald's. There's not... You, you're still the one who's choosing. But if Burger King and McDonald's sold the same burger... They do! The exact same burger. Pretty much. You, can you taste a difference? Yes. With fast food burgers. Absolutely. I have not the power for I'm, that. I'm glad that they exist... And they're both trying to make a better product that only they sell. I'm glad that when Microsoft looks at Sony, they what say, is different? I know, about... I know you're passionate about this, but you're you're 100 percent wrong. No, you are 100 percent wrong. I'm glad that when Microsoft looked, you at are 100 wrong on how monopolies are illegal. 
there's no reason <laughs> why the video game industry would put each other out of business if there's no non ex if there were non exclusives as opposed to any other business in the world that they basically can't unless you can patent something. There's no exclusives in the business world. That's, that's why there's copycat businesses popping up all over the world because you can't. Then it's just all consumer choice. That's all it is. And so then it, can competition forces prices down because everything's the same. Well, they, I they don't, do, I, but who generally wins those? It's the big companies. Typically, in defense, so if one of them goes under. If they come back, they're not going to be the big company anymore, and the big company's going to have the resources to do whatever the hell they want. Not in America, and though. The patents, because, right? Exactly. You're right, but what I'm trying to say is that hasn't we haven't had a monopoly, and that's that. That's, that's because we have exclusives. We have the competition like that. No, we don't. We you can't. There's no competition between PlayStation and Xbox. I'm, we're not. I'm talking about business. Yeah. There's no difference between the video game business and business in general. It's all price point. It has nothing to do with Whoa. anything else but but price point. You can because you can name literally. You know how to get around a patent. You name it something different. Well, that's not true. That's not true. And yeah, slightly change the ingredient by one. Look at. Samsung and Apple. Yeah, you can go to you can go to you can sue each other over it all you want, and it worked. Is any of them out of business? No, but you still can can sue. Right, but that's what I'm saying. No one's out of business. Oh my gosh, they, it's all price, all price. It's all that matters, and that's why exclusives. This shouldn't be. I mean, just make them all, make them all. But and there's then, a reason why we haven't seen any new major phone makers in the last ten years. Correct. Because it's impossible to get into the market. I'm not saying that the big companies aren't strangling the little companies, but Microsoft is a big company. Sony is a big company. Nintendo is a big company. But eventually one would drive the other out of business. That's, that's re- regardless. That's regardless. It's not. Yes. Because how would they get back in, which is what you're proposing? So what I want to say is I'm glad that Microsoft looked at Sony and the PlayStation 3 and they saw that they had lots of RPGs and they had none and they cut a check to Mistwalker to bring new games, new IPs that didn't exist before that to their mm-hmm. console. I think that I benefited as a consumer because of that. I don't benefit by having to buy an Xbox One to play Halo. Okay, but that's not a counter-argument. Yeah, it means I have to pay more money. I lose as a consumer. But I want to play good games, not just the same games. Why are the games bad? Because they're not exclusive. I'm saying that maybe a company wouldn't have made that's supposition. a brand new... IP if they didn't get a big check from someone. Maybe if Picasso hadn't have painted, there would have been way better art. Maybe if... That's what I'm saying. Maybe it, if the merchants in Venice didn't give money to artists, art wouldn't exist. It's all supposition. We can't... That's true. All right. No, no, no. That's that's true. How? Because of the But they did give the money. They did. The- exactly. They sponsored them and allowed them to make things that they wouldn't have been able to make otherwise because the supplies required to make art were expensive. So at no point, if they hadn't given money, there would n- never be art. There would probably be art at some point once we got to the Industrial Revolution right. and it became much more survivable. So how do you know the art wouldn't times? have been better if they had of... If we hadn't started art until yeah. the Industrial Revolution? I can suppose. Why, why wouldn't it be better? He's, he, I mean... No, you guys just got a... Supposition. It's supposition. You can't use supposition in an argument. I can suppose I can. anything. No, you can't. Sure you can. It's, it's irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. Absolutely. How is supposition not irrelevant? I mean, everything we're talking about is it's, hypothetical. But you're, su- you're supposing you're, hypothetical. you're supposing that if this game didn't come out, then this game wouldn't be as good. Like, how, that's how that's can you not qual- what I'm saying. Yes, you are. You're saying if I'm Halo saying didn't come out, then Killzone wouldn't have been invented. Like just wow. like the decision that Bungie made to allow current gen owner, last gen owners to upgrade to the current gen. Mm-hmm. There are accountants who are saying, "Can we afford to make a new IP, or should we just continue with the ones we have right now?" Right. There's inherently more risk in creating a new IP. But getting guaranteed money from somebody lessens that equation. It makes it easier for them to take the risk. I'm not, hey, and I said, just said, I don't, I do not see a problem. If I was a business owner, exclusives are brilliant. I'm as not a, a business ga- owner. No, as a consumer and a gamer, I want companies to take risks. I don't want them to just make Call of Duty, Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. I want brand new games. But your example for that is that Square Enix got a bunch of money to make a game that was already they were well, already going to make. Enix. I'm talking about Tomb Raider. No, I've I explicitly said I don't like what they're doing with Tomb Raider. Right, but that's exclusive. That's what they're so you're giving. They're giving them I'm risk not, money. I'm not saying I like every exclusive. <laughs> I'm saying I like it when they give it to a company to bring something brand new to us. 
wouldn't a company be willing to invest regardless of exclusivity? Did I just give an example of an accountant who said, we can't afford to take that risk because it's too much? Right. So that that said, there would still be risks taken without exclusivity. Lesser risks. Yes. Less risks, but still risks. I'm going to read the uh, response we got on our okay. forum. <laughs> so Rockstar says... It used to aggravate me when a game console, a game was console exclusive, mostly because I always seemed to have the wrong one. Touche. Now that more and more games are multi-platform, it's quite a bit more convenient to get the games I want to play. Now, games that hot consoles are not all that unique, but you guys talked about Rise of the Tomb Raider last episode. Uh, he says, uh, he quotes Wikipedia here. Uh, he says, looks like they said, the game is set for holiday 2015 release for Xbox 360 and Xbox One with a release on other platforms possible after an unspecified date, which is what we talked about before, the time exclusive. Uh, he says, that kind of marketing is a little strange. Why would Square Enix go this route for their reboot? The only reason I can come up with is money. Hey, I'm all for a little bit of greed, but don't piss off the fan base. Agreed. Yeah, yeah we all Agreed 100%. A, yeah. Yep. So, and I think we can agree that Brian's wrong. No, definitely I not I agree wrong. that Brian's wrong. No. Yep. No. False. 100%. No. 90%. No. 99%. Not 99%. Not even a percent. 100%. Okay, maybe I'll give myself point zero one percent wrongness. JJ, what are your favorite uh, PlayStation exclusive games? Like PlayStation 4 or PlayStation in general? In general. In general? I uh, like Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 8 and Final Fantasy 9. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I like a lot of the old school uh, the Square RPGs that came out. Why? They're pretty good. They are. Well, where did that come from? Yeah. Nowhere. Oh, okay. Okay. They are good. Thank you. No, I was trying to make a point, but you didn't What's pick your point? the ones I wanted you to pick. <laughs> oh, what was I supposed <laughs> to pick? I don't to pick? know. What? <laughs> well, seriously. I'm still riled up. Uh, it was a good argument. I'm still riled up because I don't think that because Resistance or Killzone would exist. When you've got somebody who's stubborn in their wrongness. How can you prove that, though? I can't prove I it. I guarantee you there's, I can tell there's you people, how businesses function. I guarantee you there's people who are listening right now who are screaming at Brian on All this. Right. Right now, <laughs> send that hate mail in today. I guarantee yes, this you. is oh the time. Gosh, this, this is, is the, the time, time for the hate mail. Do it. Watch you guys get Do the hate it. mail because everybody's on my side. If I get hate mail, we'll just twist it and put Brian's name in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Uh, one last thing before. Oh, uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. our next uh, biweekly question is going to be a simple one. How big is your backlog? I'm going to argue with you guys on that one next week. How big is your backlog? Yeah. I'm gonna... No, yours not. You're probably wrong then, too. Yeah. Okay. 100, 99%. N- not even a percent. I'll give myself 0.5% wrong. Uh, we have one last quick announcement that I wanted to make. Um, we are, just because real life is uh, kind of being crazy to me and I've got a lot going on, I just can't juggle the show and, and work and school and everything all at once. It's just, it's just crazy and hectic. Um, so we're actually going to be going back to the one episode every two weeks format. Um, I don't know if it's going to be permanent. I don't know how long it's going to be. Plans are that the show's not going anywhere for, you know, for, for a long while still, but I, I just, I need Life pull back a little bit more time. Pull back the reins a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to be doing that. Um, chances are that that means we'll probably each episode might be a little bit longer, uh, which will be kind of cool. But uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there and uh, just make sure everybody's aware that it was coming up. I, it'll probably be in the next couple of weeks. You'll notice, Yep. you know, Hey, you're still going to get the same amount of news and the same amount of top fives as you've always been getting. The same amount of incorrect information from Brian. That's true. So, yep. Maybe a little bit less because it'll be like maybe 90 minutes instead of two hours every two weeks. That's true. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so he has less chance to be wrong. Absolutely. I'm always right, though, so I don't understand. <laughs> no. I'm 100% 1% right. of the time you're right. No. I, the only time I've ever been wrong is I actually thought I was wrong, but I was actually right. <laughs> <laughs> Send that hate mail See, in. he's wrong about that. All right. Uh, I don't have anything else. You guys have anything else? <laughs> I'm still reeling from the <laughs> argument we had. <laughs> no doubt. I told you, it's hard to argue with somebody who's just blinded. Yep. So, yep. Blinded by facts? <laughs> no! 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 Oh my god, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. Anything else? That's it. Alright, anything else? No? I'm right. You guys are wrong. Wrong. <laughs> He's wrong. You're wrong again. Alright, with that, this is Frozen North signing off. My name is JJ. My name is wrong. Yes, it is. And my name is right. Good one, Mark. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, as always. And uh, keep on gaming. Game and keep. Brian hate mail. <laughs> Please do.
Our theme song was made available through the Creative Commons Attribution License by Ziphoid. The song title is Radical Fanfare. <laughs>